Hey, so, so far uh, we saw algebra functions. So, when there we had like two functions, we saw how they could interact. And uh, the analogy that we started with is addition of numbers of variables, so addition of functions. Uh, but functions are more than numbers and variables. So, we had to see the when this addition is possible, how does it affect the domain of the resulting function and range of resulting function and so on and similarly for the other operation. And since functions are more than numbers, there are other operations which are possible. And this is what is the subject of this video where we would be looking at composition of function. So, composition of function is essentially when output of one function feeds in, into the input of the other function. And here we are seeing composition of two functions, but it can, uh, it need not be limited to only two. You can have more than two functions uh, who are being composed. So, a composition of function is defined by g of f um, uh, is like denoted by g, o, g of f of x or denoted as g a small o f and th uh, the symbol x. So, if you see this uh, symbol small o symbol between two functions that means they are uh, it is a composition of two functions. Uh, now, in order to better visualize what it means it is uh, uh, it is a good idea to use the input output interpretation of a function. So, one way we uh, one way we can think about functions is saying that x is an input then a function is sort of a operator or sort of a system through which x goes in and we get some output y or f of x. So, this could be equal to y or some other symbol and similarly um, you can do this with g and get the output uh, g of x. But what is happening in composition of functions? In composition of functions what we are actually doing is chaining these two functions, uh, chaining these two functions or uh, chaining these two input output boxes together. So, let us say um, you take input x pass it through f then pass what you get through g and the resulting output is actually g of f of x. So, and such a structure happens a lot in real life. So, you often times you take some input process it using some, um, some method and then again process it using some other method. So, composition happens a lot. Um, you could think of it as like somebody told you something, you modified it somehow, told that information to someone else and then they modified it. Or when you are talking on phone, so when you are talking on phone, you speak into your uh, microphone on your phone uh, which then um, modifies into some digital signal which is then transmitted over uh, to the other phone and where it is again uh, converted into an audio signal so that the other person can listen to it. So, these, uh, these uh, chain of functions um, are s something which is very common, a, a very common physical phenomena and something very important and when, when we are dealing with the composition of such uh, composition of functions or composition of multiple functions, uh, we would like to know when they are defined. So, as we saw that f plus g of x is not defined wherever just one of them is defined, but we need both of them to be defined. Uh, here also some of uh, some of the simple uh, some of those uh, simple ideas hold true. So, here not only so if you want to figure out what what is the domain of g of f of x, uh, basically the idea is uh, you you have to think about bo both the functions or all the functions involved in the composition. And when we are thinking about the domain, start from uh, so th now the rules are slightly complicated, not uh, limited to intersection or something like that. But you have to actually go through the process to determine the domain and range. So in order to uh, determine the uh, domain of the function, um, first determine the domain of the uh, determine the domain of the innermost function. So let's say d of f. Um, and then see how uh, g of uh, g reduces uh, uh, the domain of the function, domain of the composition of function. So, start from inside to figure out uh, the domain of the composition of function. And so, I will just write a simple rules, start from inside and uh, while figure out, while uh, trying to figure out the range, the rule is start from outside. And these rules by themselves are very 
like uh, simple and intuitive ideas once uh, as you will see once we do some examples so let's say let's take a problem um, where we have to calculate domain and range of composition of functions so we'll start with a simple example or let me flip the order around so in this case we have to figure out uh, domain of uh, this composition of function and now you might think why is this a composition so as uh, as some of you can uh, um, figure out here f of x is sin of x g of x is square root of x so f of uh, f of x is sin of x which gets gets fed into g of x and we get composition square root of sin of x so as you can see like composition of function is not like a fair, uh, not like a very different concept than what you have seen so far but it is a useful and a principled way of thinking about like problems like these and you can have uh, for instance like addition of functions to sometimes so let's say inside you can have sin of x plus uh, square root of x and then um, then you you can have f of x and g of x as this and h of x as um, and a new function h of x as f plus g of x and then a composition is happening over square root of uh, again with the square root function so you can have like multiple operations happening in a single e expression so just try to isolate them whenever you see an expression and uh, think in a principle fashion about them so we'll start with a with the simple problem where we have just sin of x and square root of x so uh, and we want to find out the domain so domain of sin of x uh, is nothing but the whole real line so the whole real number line so it doesn't impose any uh, uh, so it's a real valued function um which is defined over the whole uh, real line so domain of sin of x so d of f which we call it so domain of f, f of x is um, real line but domain of uh, g of x is uh, only um, the positive numbers only the non negative numbers so let me so now since x is defined over the whole real line uh, this is not imposing any uh, restrictions on the domain but the output of sin of x goes into g so in all the points where sin of x is less than 0 this composition cannot be defined so this is what i meant by going from inside to outside uh, so you start from inside figure out what the domain is and what it does uh, and what it means as uh, what the range of uh, this function is and then figure out what the domain of the resulting function is so from sin of x we figured out the domain of sin of x which was r and then next thing that we did was figure out the range of sin of x which was positive and negative both from minus 1 to plus 1 and then we saw range of sin of x that is the output of sin of x was actually the input of g of x so uh, and d of g is uh, domain of g is only uh, non negative numbers so the domain of the composition is all points x such that sin of x is uh, greater than equal to 0 and uh, this you can figure out is uh, equal to 0 pi union Two pi comma three pi, and so on, and this is all in the positive side, and you you will also have elements in the negative side. So such that um, and so on. Let me make sure this is correct. So. Yeah. 
So you will have a lot of elements like this and based on this you can figure out the domain. And similarly if you are going for range you have to start from uh, the outside, the function which is defined the most outside and from there figure out the um, range of the composition of functions.